So we're back so that I can give you examples for the five and dime jewelry style challenge. Um, you know, I mentioned to you gumball charms, little girls, see, hear, no, speak, no, evil, monkeys, grandma beads, Hong Kong plastic, uh, surfer girl jewelry, hippie chick jewelry, um, up to early age. You know what? We could even go up to early, like, I said 70s. I said 50s to 70s, but you know what? We could even stretch it up a little bit to 80s because some of us are a little younger and they may not quite get this stuff yet. But through this challenge, not only are you going to come up with a new design concept for yourself, but you're probably going to learn something about vintage jewelry, which pleases me no end. Because I would love for you to learn about vintage jewelry. It just broadens your horizons tremendously. And really, you know... Everything that we sell at Bisu Boutiques, well not everything, but I would say probably 85% of it, is something that comes from a vintage source. All of our stampings are made from the old dyes, you know, that, that made this jewelry to begin with. So the more you learn, the better an artist you become, and that just delights me to think that that you might have found me somewhere and we might have become friends and you might have frequented my site or or just my Facebook or my YouTube and you might have learned something and, and taken it to a place where you can support yourself making jewelry in a whole new way. How great would that be? It's possible. But anyway, let's focus on what I have down here on the table so that so you can learn a little bit about what I mean. Let's see, where do I start? Well, here you have a, a beaded flower power pen. This is Hong Kong plastic. It's just all beaded into a base. Very difficult to see how they've done it because the beading frame is down in here. But that black and white is probably actually a 60s piece. Mid 60s I'd say. Not in that great of shape but it was worth keeping because it, it just made me think. Um, we talked about fruit jewelry. These were made in western Germany in the 50s. Little straw base, little tiny fruits. Aren't they darling? Now why couldn't you do something like that? Why couldn't you take filigree and maybe put Carmen Miranda fruit beads on it and string them all in a line and, and make a collar necklace or a bib necklace? <laughs> How wild would that be? Or, um, for example, these. These, i got to show you guys. These, these are filigree. This piece here is still made underneath. The smaller ones, not so much. But this is just, this is what I call cold paint enamel. And you know what it is? It's spray paint. Now you can take your Adirondack dabbers now, or your Lumiere, and color that in, and just varnish it, and you've basically got the same thing. These have held up since the 50s. Aren't they awesome? Now, again, I'd like to see somebody take and do a whole string of this, you know, all the way around, and make a collar necklace. Or maybe you string them up and make them into a bracelet, maybe, or a bracelet focal, uh, or sh maybe you could string chain up to the finger and make a ring and make a slave bracelet. Oh, that's cool. These I love, and I'm not sure if we still do. I'll check, but we we used to have these very findings on the website. I found them in a warehouse. See what they are? They're hoops that are perforated. And then somebody's taken little bead caps and they've sewed in, caged in little tiny seed beads. These are probably Czech. Wait a minute, I'm lying. These are Hong Kong. Right there. Hong Kong. I thought they were Czech. They looked Czech. Anyway, I wear these all the time. I love these. You know, what about something like that? What about something like this all the way around a wrist? Pierce a cuff or something. Drill holes in it. Flower power. That's a plastic one. I have earrings to match that too. Flower power, okay. And here is a great big rivet set piece. See, look at that. That'd be some work, wouldn't it? They did this with a kick press back in the day. All of these are riveted cups, and then they've glued in little pearls. This doesn't say bow jewels, but this is made very much like a bow jewels piece. Very 50s, early 60s. I love this piece. You'd think, oh, you know, if you really collect costume jewelry, you'd say, oh, that's kind of low end for me. But, you know, this is marvelous. This took a lot of work. Somebody made their living in the United States making stuff like this in the 50s. And it's very showy when you wear it. You know, what about if you put this for a centerpiece for a necklace? Why not? Okay, when I talk about Victorian Revival, this is Victorian Revival at its best. It's not signed. There's a pad inside here with nothing on it. It looks like maybe it was supposed to be Whiting and Davis. 
Whiting and Davis would probably be a little bit better jewelry than you'd find in a five and dime. But I just wanted to show you what I mean by Victorian Revival. This was made in the 50s. There was a Victorian Revival period in the 50s. Um, oh, here you go. Prom jewelry. Big time. Five and dime. Five and dime rhinestone. Prom jewelry. What could you do to make something look like this in whatever color you like? You're not going to make the same piece. Just how could you be inspired by it? Um, here's a piece of Juliana jewelry. Now, Juliana jewelry is a little better than all that, but you may be in, inspired by this. Okay, so it's of the period, so we're going to go there. And Juliana, people, please don't hate me. But this is how you know it's Juliana the back. That's the way I understand it. You can correct me if you like, if you're an expert on the Liz and Elster, Juliana, Juliana, however you say it, because I'm not. I've had a lot of it in my time. This is the last piece I have, and it's mine. <laughs> but I, I get inspired by the jewels and the, and the luminous nature of it. I love it. Um, here's something. These, I only have one. I don't know what happened to the other one. Um, this is Hattie Carnegie, believe it or not. Now, why couldn't you take copper, form it, and then use your spatter paints and stuff, and then ice resin or diamond glaze over it and, and make forms like this. Why couldn't you do that? You knew you could. Uh, this is cool. These are Weiss uh, from the 50s, inlaid into some sort of a resin. Now, why couldn't you do this in polymer clay? Of course you could. Why couldn't you? Why don't you? Why don't I? Maybe I will. Um, another thing, um, grandma beads, here we go. Well, what, what new spin could you put on grandma beads? These were made where? Can I even read it? Oh, you're not going to believe this. Alice Cavaness? That was better jewelry. But grandma beads, nonetheless. Okay. Um, getting back, oh, memory wire, spiral. You know, maybe about uh, seven, eight years ago, this stuff was really hot. I couldn't make these fast enough. And then they kind of fell off. These beads are all vintage beads that I've cabbaged off other stuff. Um, they're Japanese beads that kind of have a Haskell look. Um, I love this. I love spiral bracelets. Why don't we see some fabulous spiral bracelets, girls? I do sell the Remembrance Memory Wire and the Bead and Line Memory Wire on my site if you need to get some. I always buy stainless steel. I will tell you that. If you're going to do this stuff, always buy stainless steel. Wood jewelry. I showed this in my first favorite things, the video. What could you do with wood? Do you like to paint? Maybe you could do something cool with wood and show us. Why not? Here's a real piece of Hong Kong. I have a bunch of these. Maybe I'll whip them out. How do you like that tassel? See, here's the original paper tag. Made, made in Hong Kong. Very little metal in this friends mostly plastic no kidding some cool parts in here um, these don't have any huge value you know if you wanted to take them apart wouldn't hurt my feelings grandma beads these are made in Japan I kept them because I have an outfit they go with and I love them grandma beads what can you do with grandma beads you probably have a bunch that need restrung okay um, oh, here's some stuff I want to show you for sure. Little Hong Kong plastic parts collaged into earrings. Um, Moon Glow Center. Moon Glow Lucite. One of my favorites. We do have Moon Glow Lucite beads and bits on our website. So you may want to look there. They're not easy to find. And ours are the real thing. There's a lot of stuff on websites being called Lucite. And it kind of annoys me a little bit. Because I know something about plastic and I bet... You guys may know a lot more than I do. And I'm seeing a lot of matte acrylic. I'm sorry. It's not lucite. It's new. And it's not lucite. Lucite's thick. It almost has a Bakelite quality and you can drill it. And the old stuff is the best, I think. Anyway, but getting back to this, I want to show you some more. This is that necklace that I showed on my blog and also on the Facebook. We carry this mount. We carry these glass cabs. Um, this is just some old Czech uh, glass that I had, and these beads, these flower beads I took off of a little dollar bouquet that I got in the dollar store and put them on. Um, we also have the cabs that magnify, and these are vintage um, Mexican restaurant matchbook covers that I've cut up, put on here. I love this, and I wear it from time to time, and I could never sell it. Um, 
also another thing. I, here's a takeoff on Grandma Beats. I did this while I sat in a mall at a show about 12 years ago, one of the last mall shows I ever did. Um, I was looking at Grandma Beats and I thought, what can I do with some stray beads? And I wired these all up free form, kind of hippie chick style. You can see the wires was not a good non tarnish style, and this is very freeform, but I wish I had time to do this over and over again. Imagine what you could do with this concept. I mean, really. This is, I have to say so myself, even though I did it, uh, this is awesome. These are beautiful. What can you do like this? I know you can do it better. This little button. This is a Lamode button. I think I got it in Joanne's. This just has the feeling of five and dime all over it to me. So look for buttons. Okay, now here's some real stuff from the day. This is a wristwatch somebody gave me in the 60s. It's an old Timex. If you want to do something with rich wa wristwatches, look for 60s. Old 60s, 50s maybe, teacher watches. It's even got water, I think, under the blue crystal. Um, this little charm was from a charm bracelet that my aunt gave me back about time President Kennedy was in office. A little Myrtle Wood charm. If you got anything like that, put it in some drawer. Let's see what you do with it. Uh, or make some. If you're good with polymer, you might be able to do it, or good with wood. Um, these are real Grant's 9 cent jewelry earrings, right here. From the bin, saved from my days. Not much to them. I don't know if Rob can get in there and show you. Here's a pair of little brass India elephants. And here's some earrings. I thought it was so grown up with these. With the pearls and the leaves. It's a cast mount. And little enameled cherries from the late 60s. I bought these with my allowance. I'd go to Grant's and see what they had in the 9 cent bin. And I kept these for some reason. And then this is Lisa Jules from the early 70s. Now what could you do along these lines? This is mine. Believe it or not, I wore this the day I got married. And you might say, ooh. But I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't really look real wedding-y, but I loved it. It's a very dear friend gave it to me who's no longer living, and um, I wore this on my wedding, and it's very, very five and dime, let me tell you. Uh, one last thing I want to show you, too. This shows under an art bubble. I did this with a, a 50s Mexican restaurant match cover. So if you were into more to, you know, images and stuff like that, why not do a brooch like this? This could be dime store. Why not? It has a very cartoonish kind of fun look. I think it's Dime Store. And it kind of takes you too to this Lucite stuff that they used to back carve. Guys used to do this and you'd find it in the five and dime. They back carved the Lucite. I have a little collection of these pins and I love them. Design under plastic. Uh, why couldn't you do this with a decal or something you painted under resin? You know you could. There you go. Five and dime style. So hopefully this gets you started on your journey because this is a journey. This is going to be quite a journey, and we're going to take it together. And this is not a competition, though there will be gifts. I'm not going to pick a winner. No one's going to pick a winner so that this one's better than this one. We're all going to put our work together. We're all going to enjoy each other. We're going to challenge ourselves to one-up ourselves and to get this pulled together and to make a new design type. And it's just so exciting. I, I just just feel like I'm going to shake with excitement. I hope you'll participate. Please come to the Bisu Boutique's fan page. Please stay, stay tuned to my blog, tuned to my newsletter. It goes on to November 13, 2010, first round. Um, maybe you'll get one of the gift certificates, because then you could come to our site and buy some more stuff for round two. Wouldn't that be cool? And use the certificate. So um, I hope to see you over there. If you have any questions, you know where I am. I want to help.